The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone from Southern California. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. My name is Ken Shreve. Thanks very much for tuning in. Number to use to call is 877-927-6648. Give me a call. Let's uh, talk about uh, what appears to be a good start to the month of May. A reminder that my show airs uh, every Tuesday and Thursday on TFNN from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. You can get the show uh, as a podcast on iTunes, and don't forget you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Just type in tfnn.mobi in your smartphone browser, and you can listen to the stream that way. I will be going over charts as I normally do on my show, and if you want to look at those charts right along with me, you can do it at Tiger TV on the homepage of tfnn.com. Channel 1, the show is carried live, and it is archived on Channel 13. And Tiger TV is uh, can also be viewed on your smartphone now. It's been going on for a little while, so be sure to uh, check that out. Folks, uh, a reminder, uh, getting good sign-ups for my free webinar that's uh, happening tomorrow, Wednesday, May 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. 3.30 on the West Coast, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. going to uh, just give some timely market analysis, uh, talk about uh, what's been going on in this uh, market, uh, take a look at some setups, talk about my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio, how I go about uh, buying stocks at the right time, uh, what goes into my decision to uh, take uh, uh, profits, uh, analyzing general market health, and uh, at the end we'll talk about a vibrant uh, IPO market. So uh, I'll give you a lot of ideas uh, tomorrow. You'll get to know more about my uh, the strategy I use for ultimate growth stocks, uh, my newsletter, my model portfolio, and uh, don't forget the newsletter, a 30-day free trial. You can get that right on the homepage of TFN uh, no obligation. Just click on the newsletters uh, tab and then investment newsletters. Or you could just go to KenShreve.com. That takes you to um, an information page at TFNN.com. You can click the green banner there and sign up for a 30-day uh, free trial. But uh, please uh, join me tomorrow for my free webinar. Uh, you can register right on the home page Wednesday, May 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. All right, turning to the market uh, today, let's uh, go ahead and do a little refresh on my NASDAQ composite chart. We'll grab it and see that the uh, composite still trading in the upper half of its trading range today, up uh, close to 22 points, 7 tenths of a percent to 3,000, I'll call it 3,068. Uh, NASDAQ not that far from its uh, recent high of 31, 3134, about um, Oh, what, 65 points or so from uh, from its recent high. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 while we're at it. Remember, now, the S&P 500, we saw that sign of strength in the index uh, last week. I believe that was on, let me just double-check the date. I'm going to say April uh, 25th. If, uh, if memory serves, April 25th is when we had that 1.4% um, uh, gain in the S&P 500 on the uh, 11th day of its uh, rally attempt. And yes, it was April 25th, this day right here. Day 11, we had some follow-through, and uh, you know, we've been up uh, three, out of the fast, uh, three out of the past four trading sessions. So right now, the uh, S&P 500 is uh, up uh, almost 13 points, nine-tenths of a percent to 14 11, call it, and uh, well, we'll check in on the Dow here. Uh, Dow is actually pretty noteworthy action today because the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, took out its uh, recent high. Very compelling price action uh, in the Dow today. The uh, blue chip index is uh, up about 103 points, eight tenths of a percent, to 13,000. 316. 13,316. The Dow took out its uh, recent high of 13,297. So pretty bullish action uh, in the Dow. And, you know, I'll tell you, a lot of people are still worrying about Europe and, you know, people worrying about you know, three straight weeks of disappointing jobless claims. There's a lot of apprehension about, ahead of the earnings report, uh, excuse me, the jobs report uh, this Friday. 
a lot of worry warts out there, but uh, we really should be paying attention to what is going on in the major averages right now because you know you take a step back and try to block out all the noise. The you know overall mark market action is looking pretty good here. The fact that the Dow uh, broke out today uh, is uh, is compelling. You've got the S&P 500 uh, poised to uh, to break out. Nasdaq's got a little more work to, uh, to do, but um, uh, you know, pretty compelling action in the, in the market here. So we'll see where it uh, where it takes us. The follow through day that we saw in the S&P 500 last week on April 25th. Um, you know, three things can happen. It's either gonna it's either gonna mark the start of a, a, a meaningful new leg up for the market. Let's hope for that. Remains to be seen. Uh, it it could just mark the start of a tradable rally. Maybe we get a you know six seven eight percent move in the in the major averages, and then sellers start to come in again. Uh, still, that should present some uh, some profit opportunities. Um, you know, or the other scenario is that the jobs report comes out Friday, and you know we find out the the economy created fifty thousand seventy five thousand jobs, a really weak number, and uh, you know we get a we get a sell off that's really going to call the, the the recent uptrend into into question. So. Um, I, I will say that the the, the number of uh, good charts out there uh, in terms of the the growth names that I that I target stocks that I follow, you know, seeing much many more positive charts than I am uh, weak charts, and that's uh, that's important. Even inside the Dow, I mean, take a look at a name like uh, IBM. Let's take a look at IBM here. We'll see that this is uh, a stock that you know continues to show uh, relative price strength uh, in the market. There hasn't been a lot of juice behind its uh, its recent uh, gains, and you know, I mean that that's definitely worth uh, paying attention to. You had some some pretty significant uh, distribution in the stock uh, earlier this month, April 18th. See this big down day here where it, it took out its 50-day moving average. It's been rallying higher in, in light volume, but uh, you know, it's not far at all from its uh, from its recent high of 210.69. So working on uh, six straight uh, gains and then a, a name like Intel also in the Dow. Uh, shares of Intel having a good day today. Up uh, 56 cents, uh, almost 2 percent, so it's outperforming to 28.95. Uh, uh, so Intel acting uh, acting pretty pretty good as uh, as well. So uh, it's working on five straight uh, price gains here. So some good action in the Dow, uh, decent action overall in the market. Uh, first day of trading in May. Um, not surprising that volume uh, you know is coming in or on pace to come in higher than what we saw on Monday. Uh, NYSE volume on Monday was slightly above average at 833 million shares. What was interesting about Monday's session was that you did you did have a loss uh, for the S&P 500 and volume did pick up from the uh, prior session. So, you know, that's generally not a good sign when you see a distribution day, you see a higher volume decline soon after a follow through day. So it is it is worth um, uh, it is worth noting, but uh, certainly not uh, not enough to throw in the, the the towel here. So uh, right now, volume on the New York Stock Exchange is tracking about uh, so I'll call about 10% higher than what we saw on uh, on on Monday. Uh, Nasdaq volume uh, quite a bit heavier. Last check, uh, about 20% higher than uh, what we saw Monday. Uh, yesterday, Nasdaq volume came in uh, slightly below average at uh, just over one and a half. Uh, billion shares, so decent uh, decent volume uh, in the major averages to say to uh, you know to, to kick off the month of May. That is uh, that's a, a good sign. Uh, gold uh, today really didn't do much, down one tenth of one percent to sixteen sixty two forty an ounce. Uh, so gold uh, just uh, just slightly slightly lower on the day. Let me just uh, see if we can get my charts uh, working here. Producer telling me that they're not looking that good in Tiger TV. I'll go ahead and uh, try give another look at uh, Intel. There, we'll see if that's uh, if that's uh, working. Uh, so gold uh, down uh, not uh, not too much, uh, down one tenth of one percent to sixteen sixty two forty an ounce. Uh, oil up one point two percent to one oh six sixteen a barrel. Let's uh, check in on uh, Apple here. Kind of a disappointing day for uh, for Apple. Uh, so far, it is uh, trading near its uh, session low after early strength. Uh, shares of Apple only up 17 cents now um, to 584.15. It is really trying to hold its 50-day moving average here. This is the uh, support level. You can see Apple recently fell below the 50-day line. Then it reported earnings, gapped up, uh, but still a lot of distribution in this stock. Uh, to me, you know, you're hearing more and more people talk about the fact that Apple's uh, 
you know, leadership role in this market could be coming to an end. And certainly recent price and volume trends in the stock uh, do indicate uh, that this is probably the, the case. Uh, Apple has uh, only corrected about 12, uh, 13 uh, percent off its, uh, off its recent high. We, uh, stock that's made a run like, uh, like Apple has, um, you know, it's not uncommon to see a stock form a base and correct 20, 25 percent off its uh, recent high. So the bottom line with Apple is that it looks like it's ready to consolidate gains here. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see uh, more, more selling pressure uh, come into this stock. That certainly has been the case since uh, April 10th. Not a stock that I'm interested in, in buying at, at all here. Uh, if it forms a proper base and, uh, and new institutional money starts to come into the stock, that's another story. But uh, right now, it's a stock uh, under distribution. It should be, it should be avoided because you know buying a stock that is under distribution that's just swimming against uh, the market tide uh, generally a losing uh, proposition so not a great day of trading for Apple um, but um uh, nothing new there. The stock has been under selling pressure for several days now. Uh, take a look at uh, PF Chags today. Some headline stocks. That's PFCB. PFCB on the Nasdaq. Uh, PF Chags is going uh, going private, being bought uh, for 1.1 billion dollars by Centerbridge uh, Partners. Uh, PF Chang's has been struggling to update its brand, uh, competi big competition out there. Food's really good there. I mean, I've never had a bad meal at PF Chang's. I uh, have one uh, nearby here. Haven't eaten there in a long time, but... Um very good food, but uh, earlier this month, the restaurant rolled out a new menu to uh, appeal to you know budget conscious uh, diners. But um, anyway, company that's been struggling. It's being bought by Centerbridge Partners for 1.1 billion, and it is uh, it is going to go private. But uh, PF Chang's uh, getting a nice premium. Stocks up uh, close to 30 percent today to 51 dollars and 46 cents. Uh, other restaurant stocks uh, benefiting on the news. Uh, restaurants uh, up up on mass today. Here's a look at Texas uh, Roadhouse. Uh, big move for Texas Roadhouse uh, today. Stock is up close to uh, 9% to $18 and was that, $18 and 70, uh, 78 cents. So Texas Roadhouse having a good, uh, good day today. Uh, Texas Roadhouse is a smaller uh, smaller company, market cap of uh, $1.3 billion, but uh, really nice uh, base breakout today. Actually, a very nice base breakout for Texas Roadhouse over uh, its recent high of 17, uh, 1783. That was its high uh, set back over in, uh, in this area uh, back in, uh, looks like February thereabouts. So good heavy volume breakout for Texas Roadhouse today. Uh, check in on Cheesecake uh, Factory, uh, Cake on the NASDAQ, a lot of restaurants uh, doing well today. Here's a look at Cheesecake Factory, also outperforming nicely, up 4% to 3275. And um, yeah, we've got a technical breakout in Cheesecake Factory as well, trying to break out over a swing point of 3247, also set back in uh, February. And it's uh, doing it with some uh, success today. Heavy volume in the stock for the past uh, uh, five days or so. Uh, Cheesecake Factory under accumulation. All right, folks, heading into the first break. Lots of earnings reports to go over today. Uh, some other headlines to talk about uh, as well. And we'll do that when we come back in about four minutes. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investor Investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Uh, right now we'll go uh, take a call from... Uh, Titusville from Nick, who wants to talk Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Nick, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Yourself, sir? Not doing too bad. No complaints. Okay. Uh, today's my birthday. Happy birthday. See if GMCR will give me a, a present. Uh, let's see. Now, earnings uh, are coming up. Uh, I, I, I haven't been following this one recently. I think earnings are coming up, though. Is it after the close or this week? Um, Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, so we're looking Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday after the close. Um, obviously, Green Mountain. Uh, are you, you're currently long, uh, long the stock. Um, no, I'm Nick? looking to about buying. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Well, always, uh, as you know, always risky. Uh, you know, it's very tempting. Stocks uh, acting well ahead of earnings. Uh, I've, you know, haven't had a whole lot of stock. I, you know, uh, haven't had a whole lot of uh, of luck buying growth stocks very close to uh, earnings uh, date. So it's it's not something that I I tend to do. Uh, with Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, obviously, this is a company. You know, you look back in recent quarters, Nick, and you see, you know, good solid growth in the fourth quarter. They grew sales by a hundred. Hundred and two percent year over year, and another strong growth. Uh, another strong quarter of growth is uh, expected. I think the question you have to ask is, does the risk outweigh the reward uh, at this point? And my answer to that is that 
you know, I think it's 50-50 whether or not this stock is uh, going to go up uh, on on earnings after the close tomorrow. I think it's a risky buy ahead of earnings, and uh, I think I'd rather wait and see what the company has to say. And if you do get a gap up and it, it holds its gains, it's probably not going to be too late to, uh, it's still probably not going to be too late to buy it. But I'd, I'd wait. I'd wait for the earnings and see what the numbers look like. Yeah, there's a big shot interest on it. Yeah, I mean, you could you could get a big short squeeze, and again, I don't think there's any doubt you're going to see a, a you know a good quarter of bottom line growth, uh, a good quarter of top line growth. Uh, but you know, again, there are some, you know, the company has definitely fallen out of favor on on Wall Street. This was a big time leader that a lot of fund investors used to own, and I mean, its growth story was really embraced, and then you know. At the end of last year, October, November, December, it really started to fall apart in heavy volume. So, you know, fund sponsorship has uh, has dwindled quite a bit in this stock. Uh, that doesn't mean you, you won't see a good number. You could, but uh, uh, it's just kind of kind of risky, risky to buy ahead of earnings. Okay, sir. I appreciate it. All right, Nick. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Let me get my chart uh, back up here. I think producer will let me know. We have uh, Buffalo Wild Wings uh, showing. Before we went to, to break, we were talking about P.F. Jang's uh, being taken private by a private equity firm called Centerbridge Partners. A lot of restaurant stocks uh, rallying today. Good heavy volume breakouts in Texas Roadhouse. Uh, Cheesecake Factory. Here's a look at Buffalo uh, Wild Wings. Stock is up uh, two dollars and twelve cents today, two and a half percent, two eighty-five ninety-seven. Now, Buffalo Wild Wings used to be a, a former holding in my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. Decided to uh, take uh, profits uh, in the stock when uh, I started to see. Uh, signs of selling uh, back in, in this area here. So I, I booked a gain and, and felt good about uh, taking profits. Right now, Buffalo Wild Wings is simply a base building stock. Okay, It's um, uh, corrected uh, sharply off its, uh, off its highs. Really had a, a, a rough day of trading uh, last week. This was on uh, April 24th. You can see huge volume decline. And uh, it's been, been rallying back, but not much volume. And you can see it's trading near its uh, session low today after hitting a intraday high of 88.25, uh, down close to its low at uh, 85.97. So uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is another stock that it's not clear to me that it's going to be um, able to resume its leadership role in the restaurant group uh, anytime soon. Uh, it's building a base. A lot of, uh, lot of sellers have been in the stock uh, lately. I would uh, avoid this name for now. And you know, let's check in on another big leader in the group, Chipotle uh, Mexican Grill. This is another stock that looks a little uh, vulnerable here, kind of similar to, to Apple. I mean, just a big, big market leader that has been under quite a bit of selling pressure. You see massive distribution in the stock here. It has been able to hold its 50-day moving average to its uh, to its credit, uh, but I think the the chances for lower prices ahead outweigh the chances for for higher prices uh, from here. Uh, another name, even though it's uh, finding support at its 50-day moving average, uh, not a growth name that. Um, I'm interested in uh, owning at uh, at this point in the game. Let's take a look at uh, Verifone Systems. This is a company that uh, it's a provider of point of sale electronic payment solutions. Uh, Deutsche Bank downgraded this stock yesterday to uh, sell. Big big gap down. Uh, stock was really got killed. Rallying back today up three percent to forty nine dollars a share. But this is another broken stock in the market that I would not touch at, uh, at current levels. Good fundamentals, a lot to like about the company, but massive institutional selling in the stock yesterday. We'll be right back, folks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become 
a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation Location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney Financial Advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, First Vice President and Certified Financial Planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about tactical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. Thanks very much for tuning in and... Um, Again, a reminder that my free webinar is uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday, May 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Timely market analysis. Take a look at some stocks uh, setting up here. Uh, what goes into my decision to buy a stock uh, for my ultimate growth stocks model portfolio? What goes into the decision to sell? We'll talk about overall market action, uh, what could be in store for this market. And uh, we'll also talk about a vibrant uh, IPO market and three names in particular that I'm uh, watching because I think they have a very solid potential. So that's uh, tomorrow night. You can sign up right on the home page of TFNN.com. Let's take a look at uh, Mercado Libra, M-E-L-I. ADR based in Argentina. Uh, good volume in the stock the past uh, couple of days. Uh, two straight uh, gains in, in heavy volume. Uh, stock 
could be on the verge of a breakout here. So this is definitely one worth uh, watching uh, Watching the uh, swing point of 102.98. 102.98, that was set back in March here. Uh, shares of Mercado Libra outperforming today, up 2.8% to 99.45. Uh, interesting uh, company here. I do uh, you know, consider... Mercado Libra, uh, an institutional quality stock. It does have pretty solid uh, fund ownership. Uh, pretty great, p- pretty bright growth prospects, I should say. Um, full year profit this year is expected to be up uh, 31% from 2011. Uh, accelerating growth in 2013 up 33%. So that's uh, annual earnings, uh, better than 30% growth uh, this year and uh, next. Uh, the internet is a pretty nascent uh, field in Latin America and Mercado Libra is smack dab in the middle of it. The company provides an online marketplace and electronic payment service in Latin America and uh, you know again just a mid cap stock that is growing nicely it is in a good uh, technical uh, setup here and a, a company that has a very consistent uh, track record of big earnings and sales growth it's a high multiple stock but again when you're growing at 30 uh, 30 percent um, you know a high multiple is uh, is warranted so keeping an eye on Mercado Libra uh, earnings uh, date has not been announced yet uh, it could be over the next uh, couple of days. I saw May 8th as another er earnings date, um, uh, but the company has not announced an official date yet, but when they do uh, report, earnings are expected to be up um, 44%, 44% from a year ago to 46 cents a share. Sales up 37% to 84.3 million. All right, let's go to Greg in Los Angeles, California. Greg, how are you doing today? Good, Ken. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, not too bad, sir. Not too bad. Good to hear from you. What's uh, what's shaking? Hi, so I uh, wanted to ask you about Trip. I know they're reporting earnings today after the bell, and I was wondering if we're holding through the earnings. Okay. Well, you know, Trip, uh, interesting company. It was uh, spun off by uh, Expedia uh, late last year. I think that spin off uh, happened in uh, in December. But you know, it's been a it's been a pretty pretty strong price performer. Uh, I think it was last week where uh, Expedia E X P E uh, reported uh, strong earnings, and um, uh, Trip Advisor gapped up. Uh, this was uh, April. 27th uh, on Friday, so uh, flirting with a breakout here over a swing point of 37.78. Uh, Let me pull up a trip in Tiger TV here, and we'll see what the stock is uh, doing today. I think it's under a little bit of pressure today ahead of the results. It's down about 2.7% to 36.49. Uh, so you're currently uh, in this stock, uh, Greg. You have a relatively new position, or what are you, what are you doing with it? Or you want to buy it? Yeah, I've, actually, I've been in it for about month and a half or so actually and it's just been kind of you know going sideways up and down a little bit i have a small gain in it right now so okay and, uh, and i also have a position in priceline so i figure you know they'll maybe trade a little bit in tandem so yeah so I mean, what I would do, uh, my my advice with TripAdvisor is, you know, obviously when you when you when you're holding a stock going into uh, earnings, uh, the the bigger cushion you have, obviously, it, the, the easier it is to to hold. Uh, when I have a stock in my model portfolio and I don't have a big gain in it, typically what I'll do is I'll just lighten up in in the position ahead of uh, ahead of earnings. So I may I may cut the position in in half. If I have 500 shares, I may sell 250, whether it's for a small gain or even if it's for a, a small loss. But I'll just lessen my exposure just because just just to protect from. Uh, you know potential uh, downside. I mean that's that's generally how how I do it. Uh, so I would I would suggest doing that ahead of earnings, uh, especially if you're just right around break even. Um, you know I mean I think that I think the numbers are going to be good. I mean the, the the fundamentals in the online travel space, whether it's Priceline, Expedia, uh, TripAdvisor. I mean these are companies that are growing uh, rapidly, and, and TripAdvisor definitely has good good fundamentals. So. Um, that, that's right. what I would do. That's what I would do. All right, that sounds great. Thanks a lot, Ken. I noticed that uh, Expedia had a little downgrade today. Um, I know they had great numbers and everything last week, but I guess one of the analysts felt like uh, it had it had run enough and uh, uh, reached uh, reached kind of full uh, evaluation downgrade. I assume. Yeah, I think that's part of the pressure on on trip and on pipeline today. But uh, yeah, I think yeah. That's great advice and thanks a lot. And I'll keep listening. 
Okay, Greg, appreciate it. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. All right, Ken. Bye-bye. All right, thanks, Greg. All right, Greg from L.A., uh, TripAdvisor.com, T-R-I-P. Uh, great uh, great company. It's just, you know, it's really tough to tell how a stock is going to respond uh, uh, when they report earnings. Uh, again, TripAdvisor is a fairly new company. It was spun off by uh, Expedia back in uh, December, so it has a limited uh, trading history. But, um, again, you look at the, the look at the daily chart, it has been a, a pretty strong price performer in the market. Um, again, Greg mentioned that uh, Expedia got a downgrade today. That's uh, weighing on shares of uh, most of the online travel firms but uh, wouldn't be surprised to see you know good bottom line and top line growth from TripAdvisor um, and maybe even some bullish uh, comments uh, going forward but you know when you're in a growth name like this and you don't have a big cushion going into earnings there's, not, there's never anything wrong with just trimming a little bit lowering your exposure so if they're you know, selling does come into the stock, um, you're at least uh, prote protected and not overly exposed with a, you know, maybe a bigger position than you should you should have had going into the earnings. Um. All right, so that's a deal with uh, TripAdvisor.com. Taking a look at some economic data. One reason stocks are higher today is because I've uh, got a nice reading from the ISM Manufacturing Index. Uh, manufacturing activity in the U.S. Uh, accelerated unexpectedly in April uh, as production and orders uh, strengthen. That's according to the latest reading from the Institute for Supply Management manufacturing index it rose uh, more than expected to 54.8 uh, so good reading there uh, coming up tomorrow we're going to get the ADP employment change for April factory orders will also be out for March uh, Thursday challenger job cuts weekly jobless claims and then of course Friday non-farm payrolls for April right now uh, estimates uh, right around 150 160,000 uh, for job growth, the unemployment rate is expected to stay right where it is at 8.2%. Uh, what number does the market want? Well, it's you know it's not going to want another disappointing number like it got the last time around. Uh, remember, the economy created 120,000 jobs in March. It was much lower than expected. Again, right now the estimate is for 150, 160,000 jobs. Uh, if we get a number below uh, 100,000, market's not going to like that at all. Probably going to want a number at least 150 uh 200,000 i think the market's going to i think the market's going to like it uh, so we'll we'll see what the uh, employment report says on uh, Friday. All right, let's take a look at some uh, earnings reports. I mean, first quarter earnings season again has been uh, fantastic. Let's take a look at uh, Sourcefire, which is a name we've talked about on the show for uh, a while now. Sourcefire having a, a huge day today, up uh, about 12 and a half percent to 57.44. Uh, Sourcefire is a uh, maker of network security products. Earnings up big, 175% from a year ago to 11 cents a share. Sales up 50% to 46.3 uh, million. So obviously numbers like that. Sourcefire is a small company, market cap of 1.7 billion, but this is a company that is uh, executing flawlessly at, at this point. Uh, should be able to grow earnings, uh, annual earnings by a you know, minimum of 25% over the next uh, couple of years. Another high multiple stock. Still in the early stages of being discovered by fund managers, and that's why it's uh, you know you want to pay attention to to you know younger, uh, nimble companies like this that are making noise in their uh, industry group. And, and Sourcefire is definitely uh, doing that. Sales growth has been accelerating in in recent quarters. Um, can you buy the stock right here? You know that that's where it gets uh, that's where it gets uh, tricky because uh, Sourcefire. Let me go ahead and uh, pull up a weekly chart for Sourcefire. We'll take a look at. Um, you know what it's doing here and you can see here a different perspective a big breakout for source fire uh, right in this area here okay so you had a you had a, a, a swing point uh, yeah, maybe a breakout over 33 bucks a share it comes down to its 10-week moving average here which is you know a, a decent opportunity to add to an existing position or take a, a just a smaller position in a stock problem is the swing point was 5047 um, the stock is well extended past that entry point as well so I think buying up here you're, you're chasing it uh, would much rather get this one on a, on a pullback rather than uh, chase it up here but great numbers from um, uh, source fire uh, today. Let's take a look at Herbalife. This one is really under a lot of pressure today. Again, a former leader uh, gone bad here. Uh, David Einhorn from uh, Greenlight Capital. Uh, he was the guy who initially raised questions about Green Mountain's uh, accounting practices. Uh, but David Einhorn is uh, asking questions about Herbalife at uh, at this point. Uh, stock is uh, just getting hammered today, down 22%. $15.38. It's down. Uh, that brings 
to 5494. I mean, just a massive amount of technical damage done to Herbalife today. Uh, the company did come out with uh, earnings, uh, good bottom line and top line growth, but it's a you know it's a network marketer. They do weight management, nutritional supplements, and again, the big uh, big story behind the weakness today is just uh, David Einhorn, uh, notorious uh, short seller. Uh, questioning the uh, uh, how the company is accounting for uh, sales. Don't have all the specifics there, but just raising questions about uh, the company's uh, balance sheet and stock is getting hit as a result. Uh, New Skin, another network uh, marketer that recently came out with earnings. Uh, it's under uh, a lot of pressure as well today. Uh, riding the coattails of Herbalife New Skin down uh, 9.3% to 48.33. Both stocks are uh, broken now, and they should not be uh, touched. Just generally a bad idea uh, buying stocks that are falling in volume like this. All right, let's talk about some good news. How about a lot communications uh, based in Israel, A-L-L-T, on the NASDAQ? A lot having a great day today. Up 6.6% to $26.17. This is a telecom infrastructure hardware play. Earnings up 88% from a year ago to $0.15 a share. Sales up 41% to $24.2 million. Another small company like like SourceFire, even smaller. I mean, this is a below $1 billion market cap for a lot of communications. Uh, Market cap of around $650 million. Let's take a look here. And let me see, it's got word that the chart disappeared. Let's see if we can see a lot. Communications and Tiger TV again should be there. But, uh, you know, small company, but great track record of, uh, of execution. Uh, the thing about uh, a lot, let's go to the weekly chart here, too. And this is, you know, it's a common, uh, common thing that I'm seeing right now. I mean, a lot of great earnings reports, but are these stocks viable when they're making big, big moves? The thing about a lot is that, Here's the the swing point, $18.88. It broke out in March over that uh, swing point, uh, kind of firming up at its uh, 10-day moving average here. So, uh, you know, maybe a small position here because when a stock breaks out, find support at the 10-week line. Uh, it can present uh, an alternate uh, buying opportunity. Uh, overall, seems like you'd be chasing it here, but... Um, uh, again, a bounce off the 10-week moving average after a breakout, uh, maybe a, a, a small position here. But uh, I'm holding off for, for now in shares of uh, a lot. Let's take a look at uh, Biogen IDEC. This is a current holding in the Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio. Uh, earnings were not that great today. I mean, it was a disappointing uh, quarter. They missed uh, the earnings estimate, uh, also slightly missed on, on sales. $1.29 billion was a little bit below the $1.3 that analysts uh, were expecting. Uh, stock is under some pressure here, down $1.72 uh, to $132.29. Uh, uh, I've been in uh, Biogen since its, uh, its breakout in March, uh, right over when it broke out over 100 and 22 bucks a share. Um, so I've got a nice cushion here. Stock is still holding above support. I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep um, about this uh, this week earnings report. Again, still have a good cushion in the stock. When I buy a stock, my goal is not to flip it and trade it and trade in and out. I like to you know, buy a stock and, and hold on to it for as long as I can. Still a lot of good things going on with, uh, with Biogen. Of course, their uh, oral MS pill BG12 is in front of the FDA right now. They're hoping to get uh, approval, uh, hopefully by the summer time for that uh, drug really could be a potential blockbuster for the company and uh, in the press release Biogen said it hopes to start to be able to start marketing the drug in early 2013 so disappointing earnings but uh, not the end of the world I uh, am still long Biogen for the uh, the model uh, portfolio. Uh, let's take a look at Heartland Payment too. HPY, another big mover today. Uh, probably a name that you uh, haven't heard of. Heartland Payment Systems uh, stock is up seven percent today to thirty two sixty. Heartland is a uh, another provider of bank card payment processing services to small and medium sized uh, merchants. Uh, nice earnings from this uh, company as well. Big move in the stock. Nice technical breakout today in uh, in heavy volume. Heartland has a market cap of one point three. Billion. So a lot of good action in the small cap space today on strong earnings. All right, folks, uh, coming back for the final segment, we'll be right back. Breakout Investing on TFNN. 
Between quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume and the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. What you think about, you bring about. What you focus on grows. If you're committed to becoming an extraordinary trader and investor, then make mastery your outcome. Yes, my best student, Steve Rhodes, became my best teacher. But even more important is what he's taught me, and the time is now for you to take advantage of his knowledge. Thanks, Tom. I've learned that it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives, but what we do consistently. I want to teach you the consistency that exists in the stock, futures, forex, and commodity markets day in, day out. For one solid day, Friday, May 18th, I'm going to conduct an online master trader course that will teach you how to buy and sell the D-point. This one pattern alone with the single best entry and exit techniques, when combined with my money management strategies, will create extraordinary rewards for you and your family. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you'd like and it'll teach you to become a master. All the details are on the homepage at TFNN.com. Sign up today because mastery is one click away. It's your decisions, not your conditions that determine your destiny. Oh, go get them, folks. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your the Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it just, it's just wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. See if we can get a check on the markets here. About five minutes left to go in Tuesday's session. Boy, kind of a disappointing uh, performance here. We're really kind of bleeding uh, badly into the close here. Um, 
Dow uh, now up 65 points, half a percent to 13,278. And at the uh, beginning of the show, mentioned that uh, the Dow uh, did take out its uh, recent high of 13,297. It um, is trading near a session low now, though, up uh, 65 points to 13,278. A lot of selling in the NASDAQ composite as well. Up seven points now, two tenths of a percent to 3,053. And the SP 500 up. Uh, just over eight points, six tenths of a percent to 1406. So sellers um, uh, coming into the market uh, late haven't seen any uh, headlines uh, that would um, attribute the the late day uh, weakness. But uh, looks like a weak close taking shape for the uh, major averages uh, today. All right, uh, taking a look at shares of uh, LinkedIn. Let me go ahead and uh, update the chart here. Uh, LinkedIn has been uh, lagging for most of the session. Uh, stock uh, right now down 1.7% to 106.61 ahead of its earnings report. Um, uh, May 2nd, after the close, uh, company op operates an online uh, professional network. Uh, recent uh, new issue that has been performing uh, very, very well. Uh, really not showing much in the way of technical weakness uh, at all, even though it is uh, lagging a little bit uh, today. Uh, but LinkedIn, again, uh, recent uh, new issue, operates an online professional network. Really thinking we're going to see uh, big numbers uh, from this uh, company. Uh, earnings expected to be up 50% from a year ago to $0.09 cents a share. Sales up 90% to $178.4 million. This is another uh, holding in my Ultimate Growth Stocks uh, model portfolio. So we'll be hoping for good news from LinkedIn when they report earnings. Uh, let's also take a look at uh, Valiant, a name that we've talked about in the past, Valiant uh, Pharmaceutical. Uh, in a pretty good uh, technical setup here. Again, having some internet uh, issues here. Um, so we'll just wait for that uh, chart to uh, come up. But Valiant is a uh, company makes drugs that treat uh, central nervous system uh, disorders, pain, cardiovascular disease, and uh, skin uh, conditions. Uh, earnings are due uh, Thursday, I believe. But uh, let's see if we can get a chart here for uh, Valiant, okay, there it is. And uh, Valiant is trying to uh, to come out of a base today. It is uh, stock is up 1.2 percent to 56.28. It's trading right around a, a swing point here. Let's go ahead and look at the weekly chart for Valiant, and we'll see a very nice, uh, very nice uh, technical uh, setup here. Shares of uh, Valiant Pharmaceuticals uh, outperforming today. Here's the weekly chart. Swing point of 55.80, so it's uh, still within buying range here. Issue I have with Valiant Pharmaceuticals is that there's, there's no volume in the stock yet. So breakouts in light volume should always be, uh, you know, treated with a grain of salt. But uh, you know, Valiant in, you know, acting very strong here. It's got a good technical setup. Just need to see more volume. The more volume you have at a breakout, uh, the better the chance the breakout has of. Um, of uh, you know working so again that's a look at uh, Valiant uh, Pharmaceuticals uh, Questcor Q C O R another company that is uh, trading uh, pretty well um, looking uh, looking pretty solid Questcor uh, its flagship multiple sclerosis drug Acthar continues to do very well uh, company recently reported earnings up 205 percent from a year ago to 61 cents um, a share sales also up triple digits up 161 percent to 96 uh, million uh, but this is uh, an interesting company as well let's uh, pull up a weekly chart for Questcor and we'll see that it also is in a, a pretty nice uh, setup here, uh, poised to break out here. So we'll see if volume comes into the stock, see if it can eventually uh, take out its uh, its recent high here. But uh, this is a good example of just a good base uh, taking shape. Uh, will more institutional money come into the stock and fuel an upside breakout? Time will uh, time will tell. But a good technical uh, structure here. Let's also take a look at uh, value click ahead of earnings VCLK. Value Click is uh, an online marketing company. Stock is uh, up seven cents today to twenty-one twenty-five. Trading near its session low again. Sellers uh, coming into this market 